Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. It's all about a fresh new you, right? Yeah, Carolyn Pfeiffer here joining us, our owner, our instructor, our technician, and she's our permanent makeup specialist, let alone all the work she does that can help you all with her plasma pen, anti-aging, and so much more. Welcome to the show today, Carolyn. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you for well, having me. Thank you so much for being here. Where are you located? I am located a little bit north of the Minneapolis area in Minnesota. Perfect. And we're excited that you're here to talk about all the work you do. And again, no, permanent makeup is your thing, right? It is. Yay. 24 years. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Talk about uh, a lot of uh, expertise in this field. Well, before we get to all the work you're doing, uh, how can we reach you? Could you share the website or uh, phone number? I just revamped my business, so my website is down, being revamped. That's okay. Um, but they can reach me either on Facebook at A Fresh New You, or they can reach me at my former business, which is Permanent Reflections, Permanent Makeup and Training. Beautiful. Um, there's more information on that one right now than the new one. Wonderful. And A Fresh New You, spell that for us, because I know it's spelled different. It's A Fresh, New is N-U, and then U is instead of Y-O-U. Perfect. Thank you so much. Well, before we get to the details of what you do, let's find out more about you and how you uh, got into this field. Where did you grow up? And walk us through your backstory a little bit. So I grew up in the Minnesota area, um, suburbs of Minnesota. Um, Ended up wanting to be in the cosmetology field, but I had asthma. So back in the 80s, all the perm and the nail smell was terrible. So that killed that. So I ended up driving for a living. Um, I've pretty much driven everything except for an 18 wheeler. And um, my mom actually heard about this and she said, I think you'd be good at that because I've been very artistic. She's an artist. So it runs in the family. Um, I ended up going to a school in um, 2000 and learned the basics. And from there on, I just, rolled because the gal who was my main instructor and owner of the company asked me to work for her doing procedures and doing trainings. So I've just been going to town doing trainings yearly because that's you, an old dog can learn. Doesn't matter how old you are, you can still learn. Um, whether you implement that in your businesses or not, it doesn't matter to me. I do just learning. So that's where I'm at. Amazing. Had a daughter. Had a daughter when just before just before I went to training, and uh, here I am. Beautiful. Years in the business. <laughs> well, I know you always wanted to be a cosmetologist. You said, but that you had some issues with. Uh, you were allergic to a few things back in the eighties. You said, right? Yeah, asthma and allergies doesn't mix well with perm smells, and the the dyes that they did on hair back then were very very toxic. So I couldn't be around that. Yeah. So what did you do? I heard you had a lot of different uh, jobs as a driver, right? So I drove school bus for nine years, basically told my mom, if you want grandchildren, I have to quit. Um, I ended up then going from that to driving motor coach, um, transit bus, limo. My last job, I drove a ready mix truck for nine years. And um, that was my favorite. But I like working with guys. So amazing. But now I work with a ton of women. So go but figure, I'm right? On the women. I'm not with women in an environment. So God, yeah. See, my family is a bunch of truck drivers themselves, and I'm more of like the guy in my family. I love driving. I don't drive for a living, but I could and I would, and I've always aspired to get like my CDL license, but I haven't. But I, I like driving. I like being in the car alone and doing my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, but me. being on the school bus, I have a seven and nine year old. So th- that must be a little bit hard as a driver though, right? Dealing with all the kids. Well, back then it was, you know, back then you could, you know, go to the back of the bus and say, hey, get your end up front. You know, they weren't going to do anything. If it was an older kid, you could just grab by the jacket and haul them up. Now you cannot do any of that. I mean, they're going to videotape you. Plus you're on camera in the bus. But I was one of those bus drivers that I always befriended the bad kid, mm-hmm. which mellowed the bus. <laughs> yeah. But now it's just, it's it's crazy right now. I see some of the stuff on these school buses and I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. 
Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, we're excited that you're here to talk more about uh, the work you're doing. And I know you mentioned you've, um, you know, had some obstacles, right? And it happens. And, um, you know, women are very catty. I agree. I agree. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hence, I think that's why you probably get along better with men like me, right? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> I agree. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. And uh, is there anything else you want to share before we get started? Do you want to talk about maybe who inspired you when you were younger? Um, my mom in driving. <laughs> my mom has driven school bus now for 20, 42 years. She's 82. Wow. And she still drives. So she inspired me to drive. Um, as for my business aspect, I just knew I could do this and just, I said, I'm going to do this. This is my jam Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm good at it. I really love doing it. I love making people feel better about themselves Yeah, and all that. All right. Well, hold on. I got to now go over, you know, all this work that you're doing. And um, there's three, you know, different aspects that we want to kind of break down, right? And sure. it's relating to your potential clients and the honesty of discussions you have. So tell me about what they're coming to you for. So there's two things that I do. My main one that I've been doing for 24 years is permanent makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, I started in the industry where it wasn't that known Mm -hmm. um and i was basically and still am word of mouth i'm i don't advertise i don't promote myself what i get is what i get Mm -hmm. um but i do work on a lot of different people um my main thing with clients is honesty um if they want something specific on their face so say they bring me j-lo's a picture of j-lo's eyebrows Mm -hmm. And they're a real slim faced woman and she's in her sixties. I can make that eyebrow, but it's not going to be identical to JLo's, but I'm going to morph it to themselves. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to, they can't have JLo's eyebrows. They're not her. Exactly. So I, you got to get so the realistic expectations of what exactly. you can or cannot do. Mm hmm. And if they say, well, this is exactly what I want, then I say, well, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'm going to have to let you go Yeah. because I, I refuse people. I don't want to do something on somebody that someone's going to say, who did that to you? And they say, and then they tell every one of their friends, don't go to her. So you have to understand that, you know, the money may be fun to have, but your name is more important by doing right by the client than it is the money coming in. I mean, I know people that will just throw anybody on the table and just work on them. That's not what I do. Um, And, you know, there's one main thing that I don't do and I don't tattoo anything black. And that's, I've been, I fought with the industry heads in this industry about that. Black turns blue. You look at old guys with old, light gray, blue tattoos. Those used to be black. You see a person with a navy blue tattoo or an outline that's navy blue. That's black. Mm -hmm. But it does it sooner on an eyelid because it's a thinner, crepier skin, and it pulls the blue tattoo colors out of that black sooner than it does on anywhere else. So when they tell me, well, just dump a bunch of red in it, it doesn't work. So I just refuse, and I've had a few people go away because I wouldn't do a black eyeliner, but that's their prerogative. I'm not going to say I'm going to do it just because you want black. I don't have black even in my, even in my trays. It's not even, even uh, in my location. So would dark brown be the closest to a black? I have some blacks that are black browns. Um, Black browns, if they're real warm, you can't even tell they're not black. Okay. I mean, when they're after they're implanted, it's just that they, they age more of a, a dark, dark brown than they do a blue, which is what would black would be. Got it. And it's black also detracts from blue eyes. Now, a black eyeliner pencil does not, mm-hmm. but a black tattoo does. Yes. Whereas if someone does a dark brown, black brown on their eyes and they have blue eyes or green eyes, it pops those colors so much more than a black tattoo. Got it. Well, let me ask, what types of permanent makeup services do you provide? You obviously mentioned the eyebrows. You mentioned uh, underline, uh, underliner. What, what else? 
So brows, I do, um, I do a bunch of different types. I do powder, which is solid. Okay. Um, it can be soft and natural or dramatic, whichever the client wants. Um, I do hair stroke brows, which is done with a single needle. It looks like hairs. Um, I've been doing that for about 15 to 17 years. And then nano brows, it's the same thing, except it's done shallower, so it doesn't stay as long, which I try to talk all my clients into doing either powder or hair stroke. I steer clear of microblading because right now the amount of fixing that I'm doing on microblading is terrible. Well, let, let's go over the difference. Some people might not even know what microblading yep. is compared to using permanent makeup techniques. So could you share that with yeah. us? So powder brows, hair stroke, and nano brows are all done with the machine. Okay. Um, microblading is done with, I hate to say it, an exacto knife tool. Some of them are very pretty. Doesn't matter. They're still an exacto knife tool. They are, instead of having a razor blade in there, it is an angled row of needles, which cuts a line in your brow area very shallowly, and you soak pigment into those lines. Okay. Um, it lasts tops one to two years. If it lasts longer, it was done incorrectly, and it was done too deep. Mm -hmm. um, it does look very nice immediately after, but what people have to understand about microblading is instead of a nice clean cut with like a razor blade blade, this row of needles rips. So if you get the lines too tight, they blur underneath and the color forms solid. And that is what I fix all the time. Mm -hmm. And most of these girls doing microblading training, unfortunately, are learning online. They're not learning on from a teacher. They're learning online. They're working on fake skin. So they don't see the blurring mm -hmm. till their client comes back after their first procedure. Got it. So those are the, those are the main eyebrows that I do. And by the way, just uh, you are certified, trained. I mean, just so people know your credentials, if you don't mind, because there are people out there. I go to my local nail salon and they offer this and I'm just like, are they even qualified? I've never did it, but I'm like, just yeah. not everybody is. Could you just share what type of qualifications should someone be so, having? In Minnesota, every state is different. different yeah. So in Minnesota right now, um, as of 2010, you have to be, you have to go, go an apprentice somewhere, either Go get training somewhere and then find an apprentice to apprentice you your 200 hours to get licensed. When they changed the laws in 2010, I ended up grandfathering in because I had had so many procedures under my belt. I didn't have to prove anything more than that. Yeah. I just have to pass sanitation and sterilization and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I'm a licensed tattooist with the state of Minnesota. Um, I was trained master certified and instructor certified back in 2006. So I do teach. Um, I have gotten out of that because, um, people don't want to do the jobs anymore. They don't want to work. Um, they expect me to do everything and I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I've done training yearly, gotten certified on many different aspects. I have done eyeliners on horses <laughs> What? I've done tattoos on animals. Um, I didn't even know we could we, do that. I want to hear about this. So if you're a horse person, mm -hmm. um, any horse that has white eyelids or pink eyelids. Okay. Most horses have brown lids, black lids. Um, but if they have white, um, they get cancer in those lids um, because of the sun nowadays. Oh. So if they have like an expensive stallion that's a either you know anything that's white, say it could be a quarter horse, it could be a paint, it could be a cremello, it doesn't matter what it is. But if they have pink lids, if you go in and tattoo that eyelid black, they get a better chance of not getting eyelid cancer. Wow! And are they awake for this as well? Do the horses um, tolerate they you? Or are you have to... out. I was going to say, I'm like, that's got to be hard. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to fight with a horse to tattoo there, and but you have to be fast because a horse can only be on its side, one side for 20 minutes, immobile. So you have to do it quick. Then you have to flip them and do the other side, and then they pop up. Wow. Yeah. You taught me something new today, Carolyn. This is great. I love hearing I mean, this. I've done I've done dogs, um, like show dogs. Some of them want like 
they have a pink side, like it's gotten like vitiligo where you, you lost your melanin. Mm -hmm. um, they have vitiligo on their nose, so it's pink in a spot. But if they're a show dog, that's like a disqual. That's like a, mm -hmm. a bad thing. So I've done about two of those, but I don't like doing that. Yeah, I mostly know. humans for us human folks. So the eyebrows. I'm a human person. I would rather do a human any day. And so, what else do you do on the face? So I do eyeliner. Um, I do upper lower. I can do lash line, a thicker eyeliner. I can do wings. Um, my thickest eyeliner actually is like almost a half an inch thick and it's winged. I mean, it's like, wow. But she's an Asian gal that wears lash extensions. Mm -hmm. So with their hooded lids, if she didn't have that thick eyeliner with her lash extension, you'd never see the eyeliner. Got it. Mm -hmm. So, And then I also do the wet ledge. Um, I'm the only tech in the state in Minnesota that can get it done and keep it. Wow. And wait, so you're talking like the inner here? Yep. Where people oh. put pencil. Yep. And, and now how do you like, uh, is it anesthetic? How do you numb that area for someone? Is that? I'm not a nurse or, mm -hmm. or any of that. So I cannot inject anything. So wow. I use topical creams. Um, most of my people are amazed at how painless it is, but I get three different versions. I get, this doesn't hurt a bit. This tickles terrible. Or ow. Mm -hmm. Now, my owls are normally people that are really fair. They're harder to numb. Um, but I can get them numb. Got it. And so, so like, you could put a lotion on the inside of the eye like, cause in that, so that it's obviously safe for your eyeball because it's going to get in there, too. Yes. it's my All my topicals for eyes are pH'd for the eye. Good. And that's what a lot of people don't know. They have to be pH for the eye. So it doesn't cause you issues. Beautiful. All right. So what else besides the eyes do we do on the face? Lips. Lips, mm -hmm. lips. I could imagine. Um, so I do full lip color. Um, they like to change the names of these things every few years. Um, now it's lip blushing. Um, lip blushing is the same as lip color. I mean, it's just a softer color. Mm -hmm. um, I've done lip liner and fill. I have done lip augmentation which it's doing darker on the outer and slowly softening that color into the middle so it gives you a fuller lip nice once it's healed um then or straight color um i have done lip liner i don't like just doing plain old lip liner because i had that done when i was in school within about four or five years my lips started turning a little softer now i have ring around the mouth really so I ended up having my full lips tattooed. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Got Just it. Just to get rid of that because I'm like, every time my mom would see me, put some lipstick on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, what about other corrective things? I know there's uh, artists out there that do like for women who have lost their breasts, uh, have mastectomies, they can actually do the nipple type pigment. Do you do any of that? I do areolas. Um, I love doing them. Um, I do them very realistic. Um, I don't like to post my pictures on Facebook because they get flagged all the time. Um, I also do some scar revision. Um, I've done vitiligo um, for some people, um, but that is a different animal. It has to be in remission for quite a while. It cannot be on the creep. If it's on the creep, it's just going to creep faster. Mm -hmm. So I always tell my clients, I'm not going to work on you if you're if it's even slowly creeping because it's just going to make it go faster. Yeah. Um, I do not do what is the big thing right now is people wanting freckles. Never even heard of that. Really? Oh, my Lord. Really? I get calls every week. Yeah. For, uh, not like a Cindy Crawford mole type thing. We're talking I do moles, freckles. Like freckles. And I'm like, okay, first off, the pigments fade. Mm -hmm. And if you don't use sunscreen, like I tell my girls with their eyebrows, it's going to fade weird. Because mm -hmm. taupe colors have a lot of green in them. <laughs> yeah. So what are you going to have if you have an ashy toned freckle? In a few years, you're going to have a green freckle. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of tattooers out there that do this. Oh, I never even heard of it. Wow. Oh, it, I don't know if it's like a Midwestern thing. Because we get it all the time. And I'm like, go ahead and do it. You're going to regret it. Mm -hmm. See, I love your honesty. That's one important Re thing to go to someone who's removal going to be sticks. honest. Uh huh. Because then they might be back in someone else's chair for the removal process, right? Because exactly. you can remove some of this. Yep. Yes. Wow. I do. I do some removals. 
Um, I don't like to do a whole lot of removal um, because that the process is, so say you wanted an eyebrow removed. If you had a blonde eyebrow, it's going to turn black while it's healing. I don't like doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I can correct. I do a lot of correction colors. Um, I get a lot of people that have like a bluer brow because uh, a lot of pays to say it, but a lot of Asian technicians do dark brown, black brown eyebrows on a lot of people or even black. Mm -hmm. They turn blue. Yeah. Um, so I can correct that, but that color will come through within five years. So they'll okay. have to continue come doing back. it. It's a process. It's a process. Now, do men also take part in your services as well? I do. Um, I have done everything on a guy. It's It just depends on what they want. The last guy I did, he came to me and he goes, everybody thinks I'm mad. I have like these eyebrows and oh. nothing from the arch out. So it looked, he, it made him look angry all the time. Mm -hmm. So I ended up giving him an, a tail and a nice arch. And he goes, I look good now. <laughs> oh, that's great. So it's just, it's neat. I've had um, well, lots of corrections. You're helping build people's self-esteem. It and is. And, and that's that's my whole thing. It's like permanent makeup can actually, depending on what they have done, can take 10 years off your face. Mm -hmm. It just gives you your your definition back. Yeah. And, the, and a lot of people don't realize that eyebrows are like the frame of your eyes. Mm -hmm. If you don't have them or you have bad ones, they they look for something to focal fo you know focus on mm -hmm. and normally that's not always the best thing on your face got it and you want them to look directly at the baby blues or the nice brown or the green eyes that are sitting there you don't want them to see anything else so Great. Well, we only have uh, four minutes left in the show. We've been talking a lot about the permanent makeup, which is amazing because that's what you, know, what you focus yeah. on. But there's also other things that you do, too. I know. Did so you Plasma Pen is my baby. Um, I love it. There's three types. There's regular, which is you come in and have full-blown Plasma Pen. You basically, within 12 weeks, you have a mini facelift. Okay. Um, I can do any part of the body and tighten. Mm -hmm. um, then there's Spray Plasma, which is... Instead of having the dots all over you, um, you're just, I'm spraying you with the machine, mm -hmm. which doesn't do the carbon burns. Um, it does the same thing, but not as the big oomph as the regular. Okay. Um, baby plasma is using the fractional tip and the smooth tip to just run over your face okay. with it. I just did that uh, a week and a half ago and I posted my pictures on Facebook. Um, it's crazy how much it tightens and gets rid of fine lines and the dark circles and it's just i love it it's great Beautiful. and i tell people you know if the only problem is is if you're ethnic and you are a tanner you can't have it done you can have the baby plasma done but you cannot have the spray or the regular plasma um the reason for that is, is you will hyperpigment and that's not what you want. Yeah. So, yep. Wow. And what is the Facebook page? How can we find you again, please? Um, it's a fresh new and you and you. Why? Just a you. <laughs> and or permanent reflections, permanent makeup. Perfect. Do you have a phone number or email you want to share as well? Sure. 763-242-0397 is my phone. It's my direct phone. Um, if I don't answer, I'm busy. Um, my email is a fresh new you PMU at gmail.com. Perfect. Well, it's a pleasure getting to know you to talk more about what you do. And, uh, obviously if you're in the area again in Minnesota, uh, do you have clients that fly in from other States or is it mostly around Forest um, Lake? No, I get people from all over. I mean, I've had, I had a client from Spain fly in. Okay. Um, I had a gal from Winnipeg drive 18 hours to me twice wow. to get her stuff done. Um, and I actually had a gal from uh, Alaska. And I'm not just talking Anchorage. This girl took a puddle jumper eight hours to get to Anchorage. Oh, my goodness. To get to me twice. So, and I'm like, isn't there anybody around you that can do this? And they're like, I've seen your work. I want you. And I'm like, okay. So I think it's neat. I'm just like, it just, it, it just to me, I'm just not that type of person that brags about that stuff. I just go, okay, thank you. <laughs> 
and humble. I just glad they come to me. Aww. So, yeah. well, you know, we appreciate your time here. Excited that you're joining us, and I hope we get to connect again. Um, are we scheduled again for next week? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, I got a time. No problem. Well, if we do, I would love to see, maybe we can pull up some like before and after pictures and maybe go through your Facebook page. If we can share your screen next time, be great to see some of the work you're doing to help us all uh, look better, feel better. And that's what it comes down to. I appreciate your honesty and, you know, doing the right thing as someone in your field, because there's plenty of people that don't. They'll give anyone whatever they want and that's the repercussion. But um, I love your honesty and clearly your um, dedicated hard work and your um, education and... And you've been doing this for quite some time. So we appreciate you um, being here. And one more time, tell us the best way to get you. 763-242-0397. Beautiful. Thank Thanks so you. much. Pleasure getting to know you today. And hopefully we'll Thank connect you. again soon. Thank you. Great All job right. today. And uh, we'll connect soon, Carolyn, okay? All right. Yeah, Bye-bye. A fresh Bye-bye. new you. Bye. <laughs> Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, game show host, father of five, and all-around big dude. I'm also an expert on drama. I know all kinds of drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids. There's the bad kind like season-ending injuries. There's the necessary kind like having an agent in Hollywood. And there's silly drama, like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your high school diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. Or text DIPLOMA to 97779. Message and data rates may apply. Reply STOP to opt out. That's Diploma to 97779. And leave the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council.